Cricket Tiger, and I'm Coach D. Pueblo in Muskogee Creek. Hi, I'm Francesca Maestas, and I'm from Pueblo, Pewaukee, and I'm a Cochiti native. Today we are at the Santa Clara Community Library, and we are visiting with artist Jason Garcia for the National Summer Reading Program, Every Hero Has a Story. Let's ask Jason some questions about his new series, Tewa Tells of Suspense. You know, when I was growing up as a kid, I was always into comic books, into Star Wars and G.I. Joe and Sergeant Rock and things like that. So this is one of my aunt and uncle's uh, pottery. Uh, they do polychrome work, so it's like, so it's the same style of what I do where I paint, um, use like mineral pigment clays and then paint onto pottery and then fire it outdoors. So I use a lot of history. I like to visit a lot of the different places that these events took place at, so then I use it and it goes into my work as well too. What inspired you to like start doing um, Tewa Tales of Suspense? Tewa Tales of Suspense, I think what inspired me was I was working for uh, Santa Clara Pueblo, so I used to go out and visit a lot of uh, the sites where a lot of some of these things, some of these events took place. And then, like I said, just growing up, enjoying comic books. So, like, as I see, like, this mountain, do mm -hmm. you go actually go to that um, location, mm -hmm. like, and just, like, copy it, kind of? Like, uh, kind just, like, kind of... Uh -huh. Yeah, um, kind of, or, or sometimes what I do is um, I do a lot of research into history. So, you know, like, in terms of, like, the way the Spaniards are dressed or their armor, you know, I research the, um, the clothing, I research... Um, certain designs or like you said certain locations. Since we're kind of like talking about like heroes and stuff mm -hmm. because like Captain America mm -hmm. and Avengers and Wonder Woman, um, who do you consider as a hero to you? Uh, for some people as tribal leaders also uh, in terms of like heroes I would probably for myself I would probably have to think uh, maybe my ancestors in the sense of you know grandparents you know, different struggles that they've gone through throughout their lifetime, um, how they've gotten us to where we're at here. Uh, my mother, uh, my grand maternal grandmother grew up in Pewaukee Pueblo and uh, her, grand her parents died of smallpox at, when she was like four or five years old and she moved to Santa Clara Pueblo where she was adopted by her, her, um, by her father's uh, cousin I see uh, my maternal family as being, you know, heroes in a sense where they were able to help uh, reestablish uh, Pewaukee Pueblo uh, at a period of time where a lot of the lands could have disappeared. So in that sense, that's one one uh, hero that I see in my my own personal life. What were your favorite characters to come up with or to draw? I think the ones that I like the most are the ladies. They're a lot of fun because for the most part, sometimes people don't really think of women as warriors or women shooting bows and arrows and carrying knives and things like that or, or in that sense. But I know those are probably like my favorite to draw. What was your favorite book to read as a child? There was one that I really liked. It was Arrow to the Sun. That was always good. I always liked the illustrations in that book. Uh, Dr. Seuss series, I always liked that. That was always fun. The rhyming, the art, the different weird stories or different names that he came up with different things. So Francesca, what kind of work do you like to do? What kind of artwork? Do you like to do artwork or do you like to create and draw? I like to draw. I took a few classes in school, mm -hmm. art classes. The most recent one I took was ceramics. I learned how to work. I learned new techniques with clay mm -hmm. that I hadn't known from before. So what kind of creative things do you do, Cricket? Um, well, I like to do art, and I like to dance. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the art I do is pottery mm -hmm. and um, painting and drawing. Can you tell 
tell us about the summer reading program? We have kids from about five to through 12. Before we even start, we have a puppet and we greet her in Tewa. And she has an uncle and his name is Matukava and that means um, chatterbox sort of. So they say, um, and Matma says, oh, Nabi yes, my children. And then he asks them what we're going to do today. And then I say, we're reading, and I say what book we're going to read. In, in, in pretty much any culture, we think of he heroes as people who uphold our, our values. And sometimes under, um, <coughs> sometimes it takes cur courage to do it. But I think in, in, in some of our, our Pueblo stories, people thought they were doing something different and they had to persevere in doing what was right or what was for the people, even though other people were misunderstanding it. What the people in the village think of you is very important. And so it takes great courage to do something when people are misunderstanding you. In those stories, we think of those those people who did that. Of course, they all, in the end, they're all understood and everything gets okay. What was your favorite book as a child? What comes to mind is um, Make Way for Ducklings. The ducks were born in the city and they had to get they had to get to water and they had to go through a lot to go through the city to get to the water. And uh, the father duck was uh, working on it and the babies were following the mom and people helped like the policemen helped and people, and the traffic stopped so the ducks could go by. That's what I remember about it. How long have you been working here? Here in the library I've been working for uh, 16 years. And I, I didn't get my degree until I was 60 years old. There's a number of, of individuals that um, uh, young people look up to, um, possibly uh, uh, past tribal leaders, um, cultural leaders, um, uh, business and economic development people that have knowledge and skills that we could use. Uh, or those that are in uh, professional uh, positions such as doctors, nurses, uh, educators, uh, and then basically uh, grandpa and grandma and mom and dad. Uh, those are our heroes to many of our children and grandchildren. Because we're all from Indian communities, uh, we must also listen to our tribal elders, our tribal leaders, our uncles and aunts, um, to teach us how to speak our, our native language. In our case, Tewa is what we speak. Um, and how to, how to take uh, those skills and go to the next step, which is to learn the songs, which is to, to uh, understand what's being spoken. What was your favorite book as a child? What did you like to read? Oh, gee. Um, my aunt uh, used to work up at Los Alamos National Laboratories. And she brought those um, uh, magazines called Life Magazine. That's where I learned to, to read a lot. Um, um, uh, but the books that I, that I enjoyed was books such as uh, uh, Treasure Island, um, the uh, uh, Peter Pan, uh, uh, Dick and Jane and Spot, remember those? Um, and uh, comic books. Uh, everybody, of course, learn and use comic books. There were people that we were told about in stories, uh, oral history stories, things like that, that we, we looked up to as heroes, you know, that uh, maybe were people that, uh, that, were, uh, that were warriors that defended our Pueblo against enemies that came into our area. So those, we, although there wasn't a word for hero, they were, they were our heroes, and they were our fathers, our grandfathers, uncles, brothers, back in those old days. Um, and there were others that we looked up to also, like um, people that uh, were especially caring, 
like in, in the pueblos that were teachers, that were mentors to us, that would, would sit us around and talk to us about good values and good principles here growing up here in the pueblo. So those I consider heroes too. There was a great great grandfather I had. I never knew him. He died in 1916. My grandfather used to tell me stories about him. He was it was his grandfather, and there was a an, an old two-story pueblo house in the pueblo proper itself. Anyway, he used to live in that house. It's been torn down since then, but it's a very historic photograph that sometimes gets out in in different publications. And then he was had a had a very prominent position here in the pueblo as a cacique of the summer moiety during his time, and I think he was in that position for like 30, 40 years. You see the, the, the old man sitting on the second floor by the door? Can you make him out? I believe that was him. And his name was Ovin in Tewa, which means duck white. But his baptized name was uh, Jose Maria Naranjo. <laughs> So who's somebody that you spend time with that you think is a hero to you? Like mom, dad, sister, yeah, brother? Um, my parents because they help me and they helped me when I was little. They helped me with school. And what's your hero? Like Janelle. <laughs> is Janelle your best friend? So who's your um, hero? My big sister. Your big sister? And why? Because she's always nice to me. So who's your favorite superhero, like, out of comic books? Batman. Batman. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. I really like Wonder Woman, too. Someone that you see in your everyday life, who, who would you call your hero? My grandma. Because she helps me when I'm hurt and she always feeds me. Um, I want to say pretty much my whole family because they help me with different things like my mom and dad help me sometimes with homework or maybe like when I'm in trouble they're like sad and my sister she helps me when I'm bored or I need some fun. And my brother, he also helps me have some fun too. My hero is my uncle because he helps everyone. He helps me do stuff. And how about comic book superheroes? Who's your favorite superhero? Catwoman. Why? Because she's a cat and I like cats. <laughs> how about um, you? Batman. Why? Because. He's so cool and has that weird, like, voice. <laughs> mm, Spider-Man? Because I like spiders. Who's your everyday um, hero? Like, you see them every day, like mom, dad, sister, brother. My sister. And why? Because she helps me do my homework and helps me clean my room. Uh, my older sister, uh, because she help, she's always there for me, and she helps me with homework and other stuff. That's great. Okay, so next is like comic book heroes. Who's your favorite superhero? Batman. Batman. I really like Batman. Superwoman. Superwoman. I love Superwoman too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Francesca, and we're here at the MIAC to do a comic book workshop with Jason Garcia. So the pieces that we have here today are different clay tiles. Uh, I have uh, four clay tiles and one pot. And so my work um, is created by using traditional clay and traditional mineral pigments that I've gathered in different areas located around Santa Clara Pueblo. And then my paints come from areas of New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado. I, I gather all my paints, all my colors, and then all the pieces are fired outdoors in like a traditional um, 
I guess you would say like an outdoor firing pit. So usually the way I make my clay tiles is I usually have a ball of clay and then I have like a, um, a canvas board and I flatten out the clay and then I usually have like a little um, template that I usually cut out my, the size of what I want my tile to be. And then I like to leave a lot of like different surface, um, surface impressions on the tile to show that I, it was handmade and it wasn't like put in a roller or anything like that. So you can see different um, uh, textures from my fingers. So this one's a, a, a female Pueblo warrior and so, you know, she's got a bow and arrow in one hand, and then she has a, um, a obsidian knife in this hand. So it's kind of playing off of Wonder Woman and kind of the, like the Amazon female type. But then it also relates to different stories where the women were at home in the village in the Pueblo, and then the enemies came and they attacked the village, but there's no warriors, no um, the fathers, uncles, brothers were all out in the fields tending to their crops. So the women, you know, got their, their, the weapons that belonged to their fathers or their brothers and were able to successfully um, defend the Pueblo. I have a question. Um, when you say that you transfer the design onto the tile, do you do it like, do you draw, you draw it on a piece of paper and then you put it on? So the way I usually t do my drawings is, you know, I'll draw it out on paper, but the original drawing might be this size or it might be a little smaller, or maybe for these ones, the drawing's a little bit larger. So, you know, I'll draw out my design, then in the computer, I'll shrink it down to a smaller size. And then what I use is the carbon transfer paper. Mm -hmm. So I have the tile, the carbon transfer paper, and then a printout of that drawing that's been scaled to fit to that tile and then I'll just trace out the outline and then I'll fill in the colors. So how do you like kind of make it like that shape? So you know with the pottery you're just building on a coil you know where you put one coil you smooth it out and then you add another coil so it's all coil uh, uh, built. The way I, I usually might make my pots I like to make them in like a jar a cylinder shape because then I'm able to tell you know more stories or, or I'm able to have like this horizon line with you know the the building and it has an antenna here and then the satellite dish and it kind of that line kind of continues all the way around to the kiva. You have like certain like, themes if you um, like, made a superhero one. Do mm -hmm. you always make um, a similar guy to that? Um, yeah, there's certain things like this one in particular is the um, Tewa Tells the Suspense number five, uh, Behold Pope. So this one talks about the um, Pueblo Revolt of 1680. So Pope was one of the main figures of the revolt and um, he's holding the knotted cord in his hand here that signifies the countdown. So as each day passed, they would untie a knot from the rope. And then when all the knots were untied, then they would uh, then that's when the revolt would start. And then these guys are all different uh, Spanish uh, conquistadors and then also a Franciscan friar or priest on the bottom here. This, you know, this is one of my friends that I went to school with undergrad that I've known for a long time and she's the ICU nurse, intensive care unit nurse, and she's from Zuni Pueblo. So, you know, it's just a combination of, of her putting in that Zuni Oya maiden context where she's you know, balancing the, the water jar on her head and at the same time texting, but then also just her being a nurse as well too. So in that sense, you know, of her saving lives and things like that, that in that sense makes her a hero. We can do a little comic panel, like a four panel comic square. There's all different ways to do different ones. You know, you can make it just by folding the paper in half. Holding it in half again. And so we're going to do a little comic story on, um, we can do a fictional character, like a fictional superhero or fictional hero, like Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman or Spider-Man. Then we can also do a story on somebody that's a hero in your own life. Maybe that might be your a relative, your parent, your brother, 
your sister. So if it makes it easier for you, you can put a line in the middle like that. So then you see where your panel is like this. So Batman is my choice. So then I think about, okay, what is Batman? What does Batman do? You think about what you're, what you're going to draw. Just start drawing and see where it takes you. What do I know about Batman? Well, Batman is Bruce Wayne, you know, this multi-billionaire person. So I'm thinking like, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll draw Bruce Wayne first. And then the next panel could be Bruce Wayne slash Batman. Uh, looking at the computer screen, and he's sitting in the back cave. So there's a chair, and then the next panel could be the Batmobile or something like that. So, you know, there's like the Batmobile. So again, like I said, this will be Bruce Wayne, but I haven't started on him yet. This is Bat Batman in the Bat Cave, looking at the computer here, and the Bat symbol there, and then Batman with some criminal there, and then you can kind of see the city line of Gotham and things like that. So then what I would do after I figure out my my design and everything like that, and then I just go back in, that you one. know, with, with a pencil, you write exactly, and then, you know, and then from there, that's where you're kind of more cleaning it up and making it, you know, exactly of what you want. So I did oh, Superman, mm -hmm. and so first I did Clark, or his secret identity, mm -hmm. and then I did him, I guess, carrying a laser or something, mm -hmm. and I guess saving the day, mm -hmm. and I need to write the R in super. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that he's in the same pose, that he's got his arm mm -hmm. up like this and his arm up like that. Mm -hmm. So then it's almost like if he was in a mirror where you're looking at Clark. Clark Kent, his, his, his secret identity, and then Superman, his real identity, right? So basically, I'm doing, for the superhero I'm doing, is Wonder Woman. It's because, um, why I did her is because I really like her, and I remember we, I, I read a lot of comic books of her and stuff, and I just, she's a really good role model to me as a superhero, and she kind of reminds me of my mom, and because um, she's really um, tough, and my mom's really tough too, yeah. so um, basically I have Wonder Woman, and then her um, fighting crime, and then everybody cheering for her, and then I'm going to do some over here. Yeah, okay, so. cool. That's good. Bye. Bye.